Well, hey, friends, um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this video. Uh, we're going back to Acts chapter 1 uh, today, and I want to read the first just a couple of three verses there. Uh, let me remind you what the text says. The Bible says, The former treatise I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus both began both to do and teach until the day when she was taken up, after he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, considering the fact that the book of Acts is really just a continuation of the gospel of Luke, in other words, a continuation of what Jesus both began to do, his works, and also began to teach his words. And certainly his works validated uh, his words uh, and everything that he taught. Uh, it, it just begs the question, when you think about the writer of the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, what do you know about Luke? What does the Bible say uh, about Luke? Why don't you just consider a couple of things about um, who Luke was. For one thing, we know that the Bible says that Luke was a doctor. Uh, we refer to him sometimes as Dr. Luke. We know that uh, he wrote, it would seem, extensively and kind of give insight many of the miracles that our Lord performed about the physical conditions of the people that he was dealing with. And even when you get into the book of Acts, uh, we know that Colossians chapter 4, verse 14 says this about Luke, that he's referred to as the beloved physician. We know that he was educated. Well, that makes sense if he was a doctor and presumably wealthy. Uh, we that's assumed about Luke. But also we know that he traveled with the Apostle Paul. If you were to read the book of Acts, you'll see uh, there's kind of a transition point uh, as making journeys with Paul when he began to write differently about where they were going and what that they were doing. Uh, even when, he was, when Paul was in prison, he was loyal to the Apostle Paul, was not ashamed to be identified with the work of Christ and the work that Paul was doing. Uh, and it's, if anybody needed a doctor, it was the Apostle Paul. If you know anything about the New Testament and you know about what Paul was involved in, we know that he was had some physical limitations. The Bible said he had a thorn in the flesh, even though it doesn't say what that thorn was. We know that Paul had some physical limitations, and he was always, yeah, you know, he'd been stoned, he'd been shipwrecked, he'd been beaten with rods. So if anybody needed a doctor, Certainly it was the Apostle Paul. It just reminds me of this simple truth that we talk about a lot. God always gives us what we need when we need it, doesn't he? Doesn't always come when we think it should, but God always provides what we need for his sheep. Uh, and he is our, our great shepherd. And we know also Luke was a skilled writer. That makes sense, doesn't it? He wrote, to, of course, the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. Uh, and when you think about the, the, the sheer length of what he wrote, you think about 24 chapters in the book of Luke, you think about 28 chapters in the book of Acts, that's a considerable amount uh, of uh, the New Testament. So he was a skilled writer uh, in, in what we are exposed to about the truth of God uh, from the hand of Dr. Luke. But the most amazing thing about Luke is that he really wrote nothing about himself. Uh, which I think is just a, a, a sheer description of the humility of the man, knowing that humility is such a key ingredient to our spiritual lives, the need for us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us. The sheer fact the Bible says God resists the proud and the self-righteous, but he gives grace under the humble. He doesn't brag about his relationship with Paul. He doesn't brag about their, their journeys or brag or boast about or what he had done for the Lord, which is kind of goes against, you know, lots of times we can't do anything without wanting everybody to know what we've done. In this age of social media and selfies, we want everybody to know what we've accomplished and what we've done. And I think it's just interesting that Luke wasn't like that. Uh, you don't really know about, a lot about him, but you know a lot about Jesus and you know a lot about the work that God was doing. Uh, so, you know, it just reminds me how important that humility is. Uh, in our own Christian life, the humility and meekness, uh, meekness, which really means power under control. Um, I've often, I was reminded of a statement um, that uh, Mark, I read Mark Batterson wrote years ago. He talked about getting a very harsh email uh, from someone that had been critical of something he had done, and he was just getting ready 
to, as we oftentimes do, maybe you've written letters you've, you've torn up or maybe you've thought about calling somebody and you never did, but he thought about how he was going to respond to that, that person. And the thought occurred to him, and I, I read this statement and I wrote it down, referred to it a lot, is he made this statement, it's always easier to act like a Christian than it is to react like a Christian. The sheer, the sheer test of what's inside of us is what comes out of us when we get shaken a little bit. So that's the reason I say it's a truer test of our faith how we react when we're criticized, how we react when, when sometimes things don't go our way is, is a greater test of our faith. And I have to tell you, I've not always reacted correctly. I've not always reacted properly. But the key to that is when we begin to feel a pride in our heart and we begin to lift ourselves up and we begin to be more concerned about what people think about us than they think about God, that's a good indication that we need to just humble ourselves before the Lord. Yeah, I'm reminded of what the Bible says in the Old Testament. It says if, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Humility is such a key ingredient to our walk with God. It's a foundational quality in our Christian life. And if you'll walk in humility in this day and time, you'll stand out as a believer in this age of self-promotion and in a world full of pride. So brothers and sisters, Let's humble ourselves today and ask God to use us and make us usable as we go into this day and face tomorrow. And let's just pray together. Thank you, Lord, for your word. God, help us to humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you might exalt us and lift us up and help us to trust you to always give us what we need when we need it. And I just ask this prayer in Jesus' name, amen.